What's going on guys? This is Invader, and I hope all of you tuning in are doing great. Welcome to my review of The Medium for Xbox Series X, which is also available for PC and Xbox Series S. I'm able to play this through Xbox Game Pass, but you can purchase this for about $65 Canadian. This game is developed and published by Bloober Team, and is currently only available on Xbox platforms. Since the early days of the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4, I have always enjoyed Bloober Team's style. They seem to specialize in the psychological horror genre, and keep on adding to their craft with Layers of Fear, Observer, Blair Witch, and now The Medium. I've continually found them to produce thought-provoking and visually striking content for a smaller studio, so I was highly curious how they would break into next-gen console gaming right out of the gate. So is The Medium worth your time? Let's dive in, shall we? And it all starts with a dead girl. Going into the story and the game centers around a woman named Marianne. She's a medium who's haunted by the images of a girl's murder. After receiving a mysterious phone call, she rushes off to the abandoned resort of Neva to unlock the truths of her dream images and enigmas of her past. The resort was supposed to be a worker's paradise in Soviet-occupied Poland. However, it turned out into more of a nightmare and the place was left lost to nature. It's up to Marianne to find out what's happened here at the resort and the unsolved stories that encapsulate it. The plot, while it centers around Marianne's search for inner truths, it also deals with other themes in small capacities, ranging from the Nazi regime's occupation of Poland, child abuse, and even the Holocaust. Thankfully, it doesn't get too detailed into certain matters but it certainly provokes thoughts of grim possibilities. On to the gameplay elements, and the medium is a third-person psychological horror game. Over the course of the title, you'll be using your psychic abilities to look for clues and get answers to what's been going on at the mysterious Neva Resort. For this game, Bloober Team created the dual reality gameplay system, creating a split-screen mirror gameplay that goes between different worlds. Some scenarios can be completed in the living world, while others are limited to the spirit world. Some also require you to go back and forth between the two in order to complete a task. It works well for the style of the game, and it doesn't feel worn out throughout your playthrough. There's no real combat mechanics in this game. You can use your psychic abilities to create a shield around yourself, as well as create bursts of energy to reveal doorways and other openings. So don't expect Resident Evil fighting mechanics in this one. It's very much a slow-paced game, with lots of walking around, interacting with objects, looking for clues, and the occasional sections where you'll need to use stealth mechanics to avoid a monster or run for safety. In a sense, it's a love letter to horror games from the late 1990s and early 2000s, games such as Silent Hill. There are quite a few puzzles that you'll come across. They vary in difficulty, but they are overall creative from the use of the dual reality system. You can also unlock some optional past storyline events by interacting with spirit elements. You don't need to do them, but they are helpful and give you a much better understanding of the character backstories, along with written pages that you'll come across. I do need to state that I encountered a couple of nasty bugs during my playthrough. Both instances I had to reload my previous saves after trying repeatedly to get certain button prompts. Otherwise, the gameplay was a mostly positive experience, However, there's still some things that they need to iron out with a patch. One thing I really didn't like is the way the camera was positioned and panned around in some areas. I understand that they were going for a more old school vibe with this one, but in parts it's just jolting and awful, especially when you're running around trying to complete certain puzzles. I really hope that they can tweak it at some point. Onto the visuals, and the medium is a contrast in art styles. Going from the world of the living to the spirit world, you'll be struck with the differences between the two. Going from the earth reality to a supernatural one that's unsettling and rather grim. The spirit world was designed under the inspiration of Polish painter Zadislaw Besinski, specializing in a style called dystopian surrealism. An art style that is meant to elicit unconscious imagery that is almost dreamlike and illogical. This works well for the game, especially when the screen is split between the two worlds. Seeing both at the same time is quite striking and really makes the game stand out amongst other horror titles. 
The environments are made quite well. While you're just wandering the hallways of the dilapidated resort, or walking through the forest, there's a high level of detail presented. It just makes you want to take in the lighting, the mood, and the overall scenery. While I don't want to give too much away, let's just say that there's the use of colors in some sections that is quite well executed. Moving on to the audio, and the soundtrack is rather nice. It's got a subtle mood to it that can really increase the tension in certain places. It's co-composed by Arkadius Rakowski, a composer who's worked on many previous Bloober Team titles, and Akira Yamaoka, best known for his works on the Silent Hill games. While there are some really nice tracks in the game, I really wasn't blown away by it. The real highlight though is the sound design, from the eerie sounds of the environments, to the disturbing sounds that the mom monster makes, it really strikes a chord to your ears. It truly makes your hair stand up on your arms. The voice acting is also quite well done, and they have quite a bit of talent. Troy Baker, best known for his roles in The Last of Us and Uncharted, is the otherworldly Ma. As well, newcomer Kelly Burke, who voices Marianne, has done work in Desperados 3 and Terminator Resistance. I will say that the entire cast did an excellent job with their presentations. They all played very believable characters. I also recommend wearing headphones during your playthrough. Because of the types of sounds that you're going to hear, you'll want something crisp for that audio experience. I completed this game in about 7.5 to 8 hours. I managed to collect most notes, but missed a few things along the way. Now with all that said, let me sum up and highlight the good and bad points of the medium. Starting off with the good. The story itself is actually really interesting. It's kind of vague at first, but over time you just get kind of wrapped up in it and you want to discover more as time goes on. The world environments are well done. While they aren't the most open to explore, there is plenty of detail and textures to the surroundings. The voice acting is also really on point. They have a mixed cast of seasoned voice actors as well as some that are newer to the scene. Overall, they all seem to bring something to this game. The sound design is also quite nice. The soundtrack mixes well with the story, but the in-game sounds are what really makes this experience stand out. Now onto the bad aspects of the game. And to start off, the controls feel rather clunky and cumbersome. The characters you control are slow to begin with, so it doesn't help that turning and general movement is a bit of a chore. There were a few bad bugs that I encountered. Not exactly game-breaking, but still a nuisance for my playthrough. Hopefully Bloober Team can get them patched soon. As well, the camera angles were rather off-putting at times, especially when it comes to certain puzzles and escape sequences. That's something that could have been executed much better. The cost of the game is a bit much, given the gameplay length. While again, I did enjoy the game, with 8 hours of playtime, I don't think it necessarily justifies its price point. Thankfully, it's on Game Pass, so maybe consider getting this one on sale. The medium is a worthwhile title that's deserving of your time. Its use of dual realities is creative and really goes hand in hand with the narrative. The voice acting is great, the world is highly detailed yet unsettling, and you get drawn in wanting to learn more. While the game is certainly not without its flaws, and it does have some kinks to work out for sure, it shows a lot of promise from Bloober Team. From the way the game ended, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a sequel sometime in the near future. I recommend checking out this game if you're into thought-provoking psychological thrillers, games reminiscent in style to old-school horror titles, or even more recent ones like Murdered, Soul Suspect. 
or if you're just into heavy, story-based, character-driven games. Overall, I give the medium a score of 7.5 out of 10. So what do you guys think of the medium? Are you considering checking out Bloober Team's latest title? Have you been playing it on Xbox or PC? Also, what do you think of this review? Let me know down in the comments section below. Until next time, fellas, Invader out.